Hi, my name is Jenya and I'm a veterinarian here in Virginia. My name is Eric and I'm a PhD student in physics and this is our tiny house. This video is sponsored by the Pecos table. This is one badass table. First of all, this table has a Pecos generational guarantee, so you can leave it in your will because you'll never need another table again because this table is just that durable. It will withstand anything the outdoors has to offer. It's lightning fast to set up with the patented lock and load quarter turn leg connection for a secure setup that only takes 10 seconds. It's made out of aircraft strength aluminum, which can support over 1.5 five tons. Its stand tall design will save your back because you won't be hunched over. And best of all, it's made in the USA and veteran operated. So click the link in the description and enter code floor to receive a paper towel and beverage holder, a $50 value free with your purchase of a Pecos table. Remember, not all tables are created equal. Order your Pecos table today and remember to subscribe. I was doing an internship at a national laboratory in Berkeley, California, paying about a couple grand a month just to live there. And I realized if I built my own tiny house, it would pay itself off in less than a year. I was really interested in being like totally self-reliant. I always thought tiny houses were really cool and interesting, but you know, then it actually became sort of like a feasible and beneficial goal. Some things it was fun to think about was how are we going to structure, where are we putting the kitchen, where are we putting the living room. In the spaces where we had to stand and be standing, we didn't want to feel claustrophobic and crouch down, so Eric made sure to raise the roof everywhere to where there's always, you know, a good amount of space between the top of our heads and the ceiling. My biggest challenge, I'd say in general, for, for the whole project was just managing time. I tend to be a bit of a a perfectionist with stuff so if I want to do something I'll spend like way too much time doing it or if I don't do it you know right I kind of like want to throw it away and start again so just managing my time that was probably the biggest constraint the trailer itself was about three grand that was the only all-in-one expense I had to pay uh, everything else was paid out over like eight months just when I needed the material, I'd go buy it. So I think it was around eight grand, probably eight months of mostly working on that full time. I started the whole project buying an enclosed cargo trailer. I went with this because they're made to support a lot of weight. They haul small cars and motorcycles and I knew it would be able to uh, handle whatever I built on top of it. I took the roof off of the cargo trailer, but I left the metal frame and I just bolted in wood two by fours to that. For the roof, we have this corrugated galvanized aluminum. It was about 15 bucks a sheet. You can get it at Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever. It's really easy because you just kind of set it down, um, you put some insulation under, and then you just screw it down. So it was a lot easier and a lot cheaper than shingles and really like the aesthetic of it as well. For the siding, I use these quarter inch cedar wood panels. I got it at Lowe's. They're tongue and groove, they kind of interlock, and I just uh, use siding nails to put them in and then stain and sealed big thing that saved a lot of the cost. Just hunting around for really good deals, specifically these windows. I got all five of them brand new all together for like a hundred bucks. Somebody had bought too many for their project and just wanted to get rid of them. So I have a window on each face of the house. So you get a really nice kind of like through cross breeze as well is very important to me. So this is the outlet for my solar panel input cables. The solar panels are actually located up the hill a little bit, so it captures the most sunlight at the best angle for the largest part of the day. I kind of like gradually built the array up, so I started with just one panel. This is a 600 watt array total. The sun actually for like an hour or two will actually be past here and it shines like perfectly right here. So that's kind of like the last call panel. It's like a last little bit of charge before the sun goes down. We have the gutters up here. I use them to collect rainwater. So here I have uh, these two 55 gallon rainwater collection barrels. For one of these barrels is the faucet and eventually drinking water, um, which just kind of goes through a, a drinking water hose through the house up into the uh, foot pump. 
This one actually is for the shower water. I'm actually working on a design right now for a recirculating shower. It's been a lot of fun designing that process to purify and filter it. Two 20 pound liquid propane canisters. I use that for the shower water heater and for the stove. I rotate them about once a month. This is actually a totally solar powered automatic security light system. It does get pretty dark out here at night. So I have this one up here um, for when you're kind of getting close to the door, it almost extends out there. Uh, I also have one when you first drive up on this tree, and this kind of lights the path from where I park up to where this one will be activated up to the door. Also built this door, pinewood boards that I just sealed, put them together, uh, weather stripped it and everything. Originally, the cargo trailer had a door that was just kind of like a thin metal, and I wanted something sturdier that, that fit the aesthetic of the house. Um, so that's why I built this. All right, and uh, welcome to the inside. Um, so um, immediately on your right, you see I have the sliding barn door. Also built this myself from scratch. And then in here, we have the bathroom slash shower. The shower half is lined with this corrugated metal. It's actually the exact same stuff on the roof. Down here is tile. I caulked the edges with Lexol. I prefer that over silicone. It's more pliable and, and durable. A standard propane camp shower. And then I have this removable shower head. Um, I put an extra filter under it uh, just in case. I've also custom designed this shower rod to bend around. So you just bring it this way and then seal yourself in. Over here, I use a composting toilet. Go around like one to two weeks between emptying it. Any of the liquid waste will eventually settle to the bottom and it will drain out so you never see it or interact with it. Over here, I have a uh, just like a regular small bar sink I found on Amazon for like 40 bucks or something like that. This is connected to a uh, foot pump. Also found that online. It's connected to a hose, connected to the water collection jug outside. Uh, there's a series of filters as well. Five micron carbon block. I also have shungite rocks in there. And then on this side, I have a much finer, it's a one micron uh, carbon block filter and that'll get most anything else that you need. So this is the food prep area. Then I have this propane stove that's dropped into the counter as well. This is just a regular AC input dorm fridge. This was very inexpensive. When it cycles, it draws maybe like 80 watts or something like this, and it doesn't do that constantly, maybe a couple minutes every couple hours, so it's actually extremely efficient. Uh, this is just a piece of wood that I sanded and sealed. It's actually on hinges, and these uh, chairs I have for it fold up. So if you really want this space, you actually can fold up the chairs. If I have a few people over, um, you know, and I, and I want it to feel more open, uh, then I'll, I'll put this down. Uh, but most of the time, I just have it up. Um, because when it's up, it's enough space. So under here is the living room slash office slash closet wardrobe area. I'm currently installing this little wood stove. It's a tent stove. I found out on Amazon, it was $100. They are pretty much the same thing as indoor wood stoves. It's just, they can be a little bit cheaper in like how they make some connections. And I've just cocked up some of these connections so that there's no chance of smoke escaping. Done some tests on it, I've burned it outside. Works great. Uh, I just now need to, you know, seal everything up, which uh, I'll be motivated to do when it gets much colder. <laughs> Over here, a uh, couch slash bench with storage underneath. I actually built this from scratch as well. I couldn't find a couch that was the right dimensions that I wanted. Someone in my family was getting rid of a memory phone twin mattress and they basically just wanted to get rid of it. They wanted to throw it away, but I said, oh no, I'll use that for my couch. So it's very soft and I think it looks pretty good. Here, I, I wanted like a smaller desk that had kind of storage panels on the sides. I usually am working on campus, either in my office or in the lab. So I'm not usually here doing work very much, but if I need to work on something at night and I don't want to be at the lab or office, this is actually perfect. This is where most of my power comes from. It's a Max Oak Blue Eddy EB2400 or so, something like that it can accept about 600 watts of uh, input power. Branch connectors come through the wall and then I connect them into this adapter. I have a cable that goes in the back that connects to a uh, surge protector so I just keep that kind of under here. I still dream of kind of building my own system but uh, for now this has been great. I have a compartment up here 
where I keep kind of like uh, random miscellaneous things. So I hang up like the shirts, everything like that. And I think it's like the perfect size because you can have a longer shirt and it doesn't touch the ground. If I wanted to have a longer staircase, I would have had to cut into counter space. So I opted instead for like a, a more narrow staircase. I usually get up here like this, um, turn the corner and make it up here to the loft. It's basically enough space for one like king sized bed. The floor of the loft to, to the top here is about four and a half feet. I added these two windows on either side as well. So you could have this nice cross breeze. So that's, that's pretty much it. At the core, we don't need that much. And the longer I live here, the more comfortable I get with just, you know, having the essentials uh, and the more comforted I am by that. I saw a lot of anxiety that is surrounded by having, you know, a large house kind of dissipate because when you're in the tiny house, it's very comfortable. You know what's going on in every corner of the house and you get comfort through that. It really brought a lot of um, perspective and gratefulness for each, you know, drop of water that we have, um, for the electricity that we have, and made me more conscious about, you know, using those resources. It was mm -hmm. really, you know, tailor-made for our needs, mm -hmm. and that was a good feeling building it, knowing that uh, I don't have to do this if I don't want to, or mm -hmm. I know I want this, so I'm going to prioritize that. And I think understanding that it's a step-by-step -step process, you don't have to build this in like even a year. You can just take it step-by-step -step and you don't have to have all the funds. We didn't have all the funds right away. Um, and so you don't have to overwhelm yourself with the grandeur of the project. You can just, you know, start with one thing, buying the trailer, tearing it down, like finding a place to put it. We, little steps come together to form the big picture. Honestly, the biggest piece of advice to actually get started is, you know, plan appropriately, but then do it. Once I actually took literally all my savings and put it into this, non-refundable thing after I like, you know, started making incisions into the frame. I was like, okay, I can't return it. You know, you're in this, you've got to do it. That was the biggest kind of like actual push for me.